Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to route your LG G3, uh, any model, any variant, so all of them, on, this works with Windows for now, but I will be doing another tutorial on another method, if it still works. Anyway, so, right now I'm on the latest firmware that my model supplies me, which is 5.0, and is on the latest one for me, V20H. So I'm still a little bit new to all this, and I'm not too sure about the software version, and what it relates to the the firmware version, but I'm sure they're the same. But I can't really figure out what 10D or XI means. Anyway, so hopefully this works, and it does, and it should. So head over to this XDA developers node right here, and this is our root LG's LG firmwares, KitKat and Lollipop. They fancy and handy one-click script, and pretty much we need to do is scroll down. We have a screenshot. And so we need a couple of things. We need this and drivers. So you would get the ones for your all the other variants, and that's for Verizon. So pretty much, we can now start. So I'm gonna press the middle mouse button to open them up in new tabs, and we'll just get these to download rather quick. My computer is really slow today. I haven't used it in months. So what you have to do is wait for all this to download. And while we do that, or wait for that, go back to your uh, LG G3, and you want to head over to the settings again, and just go down to about phone, and then go to the software info, and tap on your build number seven times, and now you're a developer. So you want to enable ADB debugging, or USB debugging, and it should be just here, tap OK, there we are, just check that box and that's fine. So you can leave that your phone there for now. And we also have, so now our drivers can be downloaded. So I'm actually just going to... And save this script here. Alright, so both of them have finished downloading, which is really quick. So just, you want to run, well, to make things easier, I'm just going to move everything on the desktop. So our script and our drivers. I'll drag them on the desktop there. So now what we need to do is install the drivers. Hopefully we don't need to reboot into any special modes for this. So the drivers can just install normally and actually quite quickly. So now we need to hit up the our language. We'll just leave it as English United States. Long live America. Okay, we can hit next. And just let them do all it, its magic. And you just want to get your USB cable ready, pretty much. Because at this time, once it finishes installing, we'll be plugging in our USB cable. Alright, so it says it's installed successfully. We just hit OK. And at this point, we can grab our USB cable and plug it into our computer. Preferably a USB 2.0 port. And grab the other end and plug it into our phone. Like so. Oops. So at this point, I'm just going to unlock the phone here. It didn't say anything about a passcode, so yeah, I'm sure you can just leave it. Now what we want to do is uh, just run this. We hit run. Yeah, that's what we find. So this extracts whatever it needs, and maybe we'll actually run it. And here we're installing drivers, probably for uh, USB debugging and and um, MTP. So now that's extracted, we have a LG root script 1.2 folder. Just open that up. And we have everything that we need. Okay, so I guess all we need to is run this batch file. So I'm actually going to wait for this to finish installing its device drivers. So everything will run a little bit more smoother and I won't have to wait uh, as long for that. So I'll be back in a tick when the uh, installation finishes. And it found it. Alright, just as I stopped. Anyway, so now it's going to restart the phone into download mode. And it's going to um, now probably flash a few things there. So quite similar to Samsung's approach really. But um, yeah, that's pretty good. Now we have a firmware update, so that's our download mode. And... Give that a minute, then we're found. Alright, so now it's just telling us if we don't see anything within a couple minutes, then... Um, it did not work. So, it looks like it's working. Press Control C, then type Enter to reboot. 
So it looks like it has actually learned its script. So we can just drop our phone, or don't drop it, but now press Control C to um, break, and then press N, and then press Enter. Alright, sweet. So our phone's actually restarted now. And we're going to be at the boot up screen for a little bit longer. But that is pretty good. So hopefully we do have Super SU and this should only take a few seconds for it to restart all the way back up. Alright, so it's optimized like one app and it's done. And now we're just going to wait for it to um, start up its services at a default on boot. So now we were at the home screen. Let me just unlock this. And we should have Super SU, which we do, which is great. So it's just down there. And we can run it. No thanks. Hooray! So far we have Super SU installed, but we don't know if it has uh, the proper root access on it. So I'm going to go into our file manager, Solid, Ex uh, Solid Explorer Beta. And down here we can go to the root. I think it's actually in settings. So go to. No, nah, alright, it's fine. And let's see if we can access. So, oh, well, that's Lucky Patcher. Alright, there's an example. That's great. And we should be able to access root um, directories, of course, as well. Here we are, another one. So we can tell that our phone has actually been rooted successfully and it works 100%. And I was on the latest firmware possible for my device. So this also works for, as I mentioned, all variants. So you can go ahead and try it on your Sprint, Verizon, AT&T, International, Slovakian, or even if uh, you live in Antarctica. You can use this on any model and it should work right off the bat, just like that. So how easy that was and it's only been five or 10 minutes. I presume more like five, but so yeah. So that's it for rooting it. And I'm not sure if this actually unlocks the bootload or anything. I haven't been reading a lot, but it's nice just to jump into all this. So yeah. Now you can flash TWRP through another way, I believe, because in Lollipop you can't use Flash Fi to just do that. And yeah, make backups. And of course, back up your EFS partition, which I'll actually show you probably in another video. So this prevents your IMEI number from getting wiped when you flash ROMs or um, mess around with your system. So that's a great thing. And so yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll leave a like down below if it helped you or worked out for you. And if you have any questions regarding the LG G3 or maybe some of the processes involved with this, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, I'll talk to you guys in the next video.